In this video, we're going to see how to do some plot formatting in MATLAB. All the code that I'm going to show you works exactly the same in Octave. So I'm going to folder part 04 plotting right here, link to all this content in the description, select folder, part 030 underscore plot underscore formatting, open that on up. I'm going to run my code at the top here to clear everything, get my formatting all set up, and I'm going to scroll down to the first section right here. Now I covered the basics of plotting in an earlier video, so this is going to be some nuance to it and adding a little bit of details to it. So suppose I want to plot multiple curves on the same figure. Now there's a couple ways to do that. Hold on is the first one I'm going to show you. This is actually the recommended. I recommend this way of doing it at least. Control enter. All right, and so you can see I've got the blue curve and the red curve on the same plot here. All I needed for this was to create my vectors of x and y values plot those vectors, give it a title, give it X and Y labels, and then say, hold on. Literally the two separate words, hold and on. And then any further plotting that I wanna do is going to be layered on top of that original plot. If you don't put hold on, then what happens is subsequent plots replace the old plots, which is probably not what you want. Continuing on down, here's another option. Control enter. Now I added a third curve here for no particular reason, but there's three curves layered on the same plot. And you can do all this with one plot command, line 27 right here. So all you need to do for this one is pass to your plot function vectors of x and y values in pairs. So your first xy pair, your second xy pair, your third xy pair. I'm using the same x vector every time, but that is not necessary. You can use different x values and it'll still overlap on that same graph. However, some of the curves may sort of end abruptly earlier or later than the other curves because they stretch different lengths on the x-axis. Continuing on down. Now this third way to do it, I'll run it here, control enter. This third way to do it is to basically put all your y vectors in a matrix. So here I generate four different vectors of y values. They're just cosine waves that I've layered over top of each other here. And then I put all four of those vectors as separate rows in a new matrix, which I have named Z. And then I plot my X values versus Z. Now this is gonna use the same X vector with all of these Y vectors. There's no simple way here to use a different X vector for just one of these Y vectors. You'd wanna use one of the other techniques instead if that's what you need to do. Continuing on down. So now I'm just gonna layer in some new stuff. So we've got multiple curves on the same graph and I've added in some formatting. So we've got some, we've got a blue line here with diamonds marking each of the points. We got a red dashed line with X's at the points, and we have a black dotted line with circles at the points. This code right here is just generating my vectors. And then I plotted it all on one line right here. I would not necessarily recommend this. I think this is a good candidate for hold on, but I'll show another example of that later on with the formatting included. And if you wanted to plot it all on one line, what you do is you put in a pair of X and Y values as vectors, and then in apostrophes, special symbols for the formatting that you want to use. So O for circles, K for black, colon for dotted line, double dash for a dashed line, R for red, X for X's on the, the points, D for diamonds on the points, dash for a solid line, B for blue. And that's all described in the comments right here as well. And I can show you how to look up all the additional formatting and coloration options uh, momentarily in this video, we'll get to it. Continuing on down, suppose you wanna draw your lines thicker. Very easy, put in your X and Y vector into the plot command, and then in apostrophes, line width, and then how thick you would like your line to be. I believe the default is one. So this will be four times thicker than the default. And when I run it, you can see that is a relatively thick line. Let's just double it briefly to see the difference. And there we go, we have a thicker line now. Continuing on down, so adding in a bunch of this stuff all together, control enter. All right, so I've got the same example from before, I use the same vector values, but I've added in a bunch of different formatting and I've changed the line thickness. Now I did do this all on one line of code, which I think is a bit excessive. It runs way off the screen here, and I have to even scroll further to the right to show it. And this line width three applies to all of the lines that came before it. If you don't want that, if you only want certain lines to have one thickness and then different lines to have a different thickness, you need to do it in a different way. So scrolling on down, 
This is where I think hold on really begins to look like the easier way to do this for us. So in this example, I'm going to use the same vectors. Let me run this, control enter. There we go, that's what it looks like. It does look different than the previous because I'm running this differently. But I've got the same vector values. I say hold on at the beginning. Until I say hold off or close the figure, hold is going to stay on. All additional plots that I do are going to be layered on that same figure. And then I just do four plots. I do a different plot for each of those curves that I want drawn. I think this is easier to read. I can tell which plot is black with circles and a dotted line. I can tell which one's red with a dashed line. Here I have dashes and dots with a green line. And that is the only one that has a line width of three. The other ones are going to have the default line width. And then I'm adding titles and axis labels to all my graphs. I think that's a good idea, a good habit to be in. So I'm demonstrating that here. Now, how do you look up and see what all your formatting options are? Well, help plot is what's going to work out for you there. Run that section. And you can just type it into the command window also. And now there's a lot of text here, but I'm just going to scroll on up to this really useful table right here. And we can see some of our options. Because I made the font size so large, I can't quite fit it on the screen. Maybe I can. No, not quite. Anyway, so on the far left side, we got our color options. So just use one of these symbols and you'll get the corresponding color. In the middle of the table, we have how would you like your points to be marked? Would you like them to be a dot, circle, X, etc., etc.? There's a lot of options there. And then finally, what would you like the line to look like? Now, this can be a little bit confusing. The default is not a solid line. The default is nothing, no line at all. So if you want a solid line, you need to use just the dash. But if I go back over here, for example, on, I don't know, this plot right here. So I'm going to change the uh, black one to not have dotted or anything, right? So if I just get rid of the colon here, so it's just circles and black and rerun it, we can see that there's no longer a dotted line between those. And by the way, you can zoom in with your mouse wheel and look more closely. You can also click and drag on the figures to uh, look at different parts of it. Continuing on down. Suppose I want to not manually zoom in, but I want to write some code that's going to focus on a particular part of my graph. Well, let me run this section. All right, and I generate two figures with this section. And these are actually graphs of the same data. It's just that the graph on the right is actually zoomed in on this left side intersection of the graph on the left. And the way I did that in the code, so of course I plotted one with hold on, I used figure to display a separate figure, I turned hold on for that separate figure, graphed the exact same data. So when you look at the code here, you'll notice it's the exact same graphing data, except this, these two lines right down here. I create a vector of four values, and then I pass that vector into the function named axis. The four values are, in order, minimum x, maximum x, minimum y, maximum y. And you can see on the graph itself, x-axis goes from 1 to 2.5, y-axis goes from negative 2 to positive 2. I don't need to name my variable axis specs. That's just a name that I came up with for axis specifications. You could just name it A or B or whatever. Axis is the name of the function, though. That's built in. That's not something that I just decided upon arbitrarily. Now, you can do the exact same thing on one line of code. My only issue with this is that people tend to forget the square brackets. So don't forget the square brackets if you want to do it all like this. You can't just pass in four numbers without the square brackets. Axis takes a vector of four numbers as its input. Continuing on down, how would we put a legend on our graph? How would we just write some text directly onto the graph? Control Enter. All right, so similar to previous examples, except I've got this legend up here in the upper right, and I've got this little text right here. It's a little bit hard to read, but epsilon display my text right there, roughly in the center, a little bit to the left. Now the graph itself is pretty much the same code that I used before, so I'm going to skim past that. Here's how to include a legend. You basically just use the word legend, and then separated by commas and in apostrophe quotes, the labels you want on each of your curves. Now these do need to go in order. So like my first plot here was the uh, black circle dotted line, and that's going to be associated with the first text input to legend. So that's going to be the one labeled time. And then the second one here is going to be the one labeled temperature. And the third one is going to be the one labeled cosex4. And we look at the legend again, and that is, in fact, how it looks. And then beneath that, the function to write text directly onto the screen is the word text, parentheses, 
the X coordinate and Y coordinate where you would like your text to start, followed by the text that you want displayed. Now I added in this special little backslash epsilon. I'm going to talk more about that in just a moment. But that's how we got this to display right here. And if we look at the X axis, look right there. So X of two, and then going on up to a Y value of zero. So this two comma zero is where the text begins to be written. And the text will then display off to the right of that. It's kind of as if that's where our cursor was when we started typing. Continuing down to the next section. Okay, so what was the deal with that backslash epsilon? And furthermore, how did I get all this weird text to appear? My title is three Greek letters, alpha, beta, gamma. My x-axis label is H2O is first with a little two and a ST raised up above the one. And my y-axis is an integral. Now, never mind the plot here. I just thought this was a very pretty looking plot. I don't even really know what the peaks function does. I just know it generates this pretty graph. So I'm using it as an example here. But I want you to focus on the text aspects. So you can use backslash and then certain key terms to display something other than literally the word alpha. So like backslash alpha will display the Greek letter, backslash beta for that letter, backslash gamma. I'm not sure how many Greek letters are included, but probably many. I don't know. Let's see if pi's in there. Yeah, great. Pi's in there as well. So probably a lot of those. A variety of things. You can use an underscore before a symbol or curly brackets to group up some symbols, and those will basically be subscripts. You can use the caret and then either one symbol, the very next symbol, or a group in curly brackets to make a superscript. And then you can use stuff like backslash int for the integral symbol for calculus students. And again, you can make superscripts with the caret and the curly brackets. Also in this example, I have used then comma font size to increase the font size just to make it a little bit easier to read. This works, this font size works regardless of whether you're using this special text. Now, what kind of special text is possible? Well, some of that you'll have to look up, but basically what MATLAB is doing is allowing you to use tech uh, or LaTeX type formatting symbols. Now, if you've never worked with tech or LaTeX before uh, and you're going into a math or a science, you should almost certainly look that up now download one of the free editors and tech compilers. Um, it's amazing. In graduate school, I basically did most of my homework in LaTeX, and it's a very valuable thing to learn. Now, I've found some idiosyncrasies. Not all of the commands that I expect to work in uh, LaTeX actually work directly in MATLAB, but most of them do, and certainly all this basic stuff does. And again, since we're at the end of the video here, I think I said this at the beginning. I hope I did. All of the code I showed you in this video works exactly as shown in Octave and produces similar, if not identical, results. All right, and that's some plot formatting for you.